Hello and welcome to Skein Day Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Skein Day. And I always encourage people to join the Ravelry group Skein Day Knits because I love that group and that is the best place to get your questions answered, to interact with what I guess has become quite the community here and yeah it's a good place to be it's great for pattern support it's great for the knit alongs and of course you can find my designs on Ravelry uh, it's also under Skein Deer but Ravelry kind of has separate uh, knitter profiles and designer profiles but they're all connected so you should be able to find me there but I have linked to everything below just in case so welcome to this podcast whether you are a returning viewer or a new viewer i want to wish you welcome this is a knitting podcast knitting and designing knitting patterns is all that i do uh and then i'm also rambling about them on this podcast so i guess i'm a podcaster as well and i run a bunch of knit alongs so i tend to start with uh just going over the ones i am running at the moment and of course the one thing that uh is i guess what i'm most known for it's the Serbu Mitten Club. So this is a pattern subscription that is coming towards its end. Although you can always join, it will just give you all the patterns regardless. Uh, so at the start of this autumn, uh, there were no patterns in there. I did include the Serbu Mitten pattern that I had previously, so I guess that was one. Uh, but the club patterns were released uh, monthly. So one came out on the 1st of September, the second came out on the first of October and the third on the first of November and of course the last one now will come out on the first of December and that is when I plan to put up this episode so I am going to show you that mitten right here right now yeah we just dove right into things today that's not usually something that I do so listing things again these are the first mittens that came out they are the Serbi Mittens. I named them something very generic because I had no idea I was going to do so many patterns when these were designed. Um, I guess the unique feature of these is that they are uh, quick to make. I kind of <laughs> sat down and calculated lots of nifty things to make them fit a variety of row gauges and two sizes, though they are completely possible to modify beyond that. And yeah, they are made with the intention of being a very sort of typical Sabi mitten pattern and these are kind of the two sizes that come in so this one is definitely more comfortable for me whereas this one is a tad bit more snug and so these were the mittens that I had included in the club uh, from the beginning because they fit the general theme and formula so they were kind of the bonus pattern of the club so I want to say that if you have just bought this pattern and you're now thinking about getting the club you're not really losing money by buying the club because I really didn't charge the club extra by adding these in, you know, when I was kind of calculating what was a fair price given the number of patterns. So, yeah, that's not really an extra cost, just so that you're aware in case that's something you wondered about. Um, and now there are the September mittens. They were the first to come out in the club. These are the Meerbolden mittens because Meerbolden is the kind of administrative capital of Serbu. And yeah, they look like this. So they are, I would say, both of these, the easiest ones to make. The charts are very intuitive. Um, they kind of follow the same formula that I devised. And yeah, so they were kind of the warm up for this. And then the next pattern that came out, it had a different fit because we all have different roll gauges and they can be quite hard to work around. So I thought, well, I can add more width to these so that the people who have a longer row gauge than what I as the designer do, do. Uh, you can go down needle size and still have the right fit width wise but lengthwise you can yank it down a little bit so and the rest of us just get some regal room for our hands so these are the Nea mittens they are named after the river that run through Serbu and they look like this and then I came up with the Fluera mittens and Fluera is a kind of neighboring uh, village small place near Serbu uh, a little hamlet and yeah these are the Fruda mittens because they just look floral and so it made sense to name them after Fruda and they look like this and lots of people have been knitting these lately they were very well received which I am so happy with because they are my second favorites of the entire club so I bet you wonder what my favorites are they are the ones that are coming out on the 1st of December 
which I get to show you now, which is the Quello Mittens. These are the Quello Mittens, which I, of course, made in Burgundy, because if I'm going to make my favourites, I'm going to make them in Burgundy. <laughs> so, these are the Quello Mittens. And now these are named after the one of the oldest farms in Serbu. This is what they look like. You can get a bit confused with the palm pattern, which is kind of why I put these at the last pattern, because they're supposed to advance a bit in complicatedness, but actually, formula-wise, you know, the actual pattern, not the chart, but the pattern, stays very much the same. These are the ones that offer a bit extra width, and it is a smaller size, so if I can just give you a comparison, you can see the difference in sizing here. This one's smaller, this one's bigger. Um, if you actually do the larger size here, we can actually fit small to medium male hands, but might want to make sure that they can get it over the hands with a cuff. Uh, so yeah, Cabello Mittens. I made these in the Woolen Knits Blueface Lester DK weight yarn, and I have to say it's quite the treat because Blueface Lester is so comfy. But I'm not worried about prickly yarn either way, but I thought I would be interested to know if you are really, really, really sensitive. But if you are not, I highly recommend uh, Roma Tretro Sticky Garn, which you can get in Norway or at Isolde Teague's web shop and a couple of other web shops, I'm sure. I just, just That's the one I know of. And I recommend Navia Trio, because it's a very nice equivalent that you can get in a lot of UK stores. You can try commercial yarns as well, you know, there's Wool of the Andes and Cascade 220. You know, the options are there. So, the last club pattern, can I just hold these up forever? I love these. These are by far my favourites. I love the intricateness here. Again, the reason why I put this up for last, because it is a chart that requires a tad bit more concentration, but hopefully that's the just the thing that you need this time of year when we all have a a need to zone out a little bit and uh, I didn't make these to be festive but it does have a bit of a, a pine tree action going on here so you know you might get into that spirit as well not that that's intentional can you tell that little burgundy is a bit of a burgundy theme here which we will uh, get back to I promise but I'm gonna put this down now although it's like taking all of my willpower and I'm tempted to keep them on because it's quite cold here today, which is actually why I'm able to wear some of my knitwear. Which, yeah, uh, I wasn't going to start with that right now. But, yeah, the club has been concluded. The cow has not been concluded because I thought we could keep knitting it until the end of the year. If you feel like we need more time, then let me know. It would perhaps be nice to do it in January as well. But that is totally up to you. I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, uh, the holidays. You might want to have an extra month but I think it seems reasonable to conclude it by the end of December so I'll just leave that up to you uh, not up to you it's up to me but I am happy to hear your thoughts and input on that okay so these are the mittens these are all the mittens you remember when I announced this club and I showed you this entire stack well now you know what the entire stack looks like and you have had the opportunity to make them yourself so how about that it's been a lot of work put into these, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so happy it's been so successful. And like, yes, part of my, the objective with this podcast when I started out was for me to dabble into what goes on in the international knitting community. You know, I was kind of going, it's all shawls and socks, it's all shawls and socks. So where's, where's the stuff that I make? And I realised, you know, I have to make a podcast for that and bring that out to the people. And I have been quite successful with that. And that is really, really cool. And I always notice that this happens a lot with kind of women's pursuits. I don't know why, but we tend to kind of mask our intent and be a bit like, I know that this would happen. I had no intention. I was just going to make this for this little thing. And I didn't think it was going to be this big thing. And it's like, Yes, part of this is true. I did not think that this was going to be such a huge thing. I, I still don't think it's that huge, but people keep telling me that it is quite, uh, it's everywhere, they say. I don't know what everywhere is, but uh, yeah, uh, it's become a lot bigger than I ever, ever, ever imagined. I thought I would have a subscription rate between maybe 20 individuals to 100 max, and it's been uh, way, way more. I'm not going to give you the numbers, but yeah, uh, I highly, highly underestimated that. So that is what's been way, way beyond my expectations. Um, the mission completed, I guess. And 
I would really like to hear your thoughts about any future clubs. I have been toying with the idea of doing a colorwork sock club, but that highly depends if I have time because I am doing a full-time PhD and I'm starting to notice that now because you're like at the very last steps of it and yeah, not very last, but you know, final year kind of thing. Um, but that is the thing I'm thinking about. But more than that, what are we going to do this time next year? Do you want another mitten club? I could do another mitten club and I have a few options there that I'd like to hear about. So one thing, of course, is we could do the same thing all over again. You could do more DK weight cyber mitten. I mean, I could come up with more cyber mitten designs and give a sort of similar quick and easy um, formula to do them with and that would of course help everybody make Christmas presents in time if you are the kind that would knit Christmas presents although no judgment either way I'm not sure which camp I am in this year which is causing a bit of panic anyway so that is of course one of the advantages of this club it has my heritage in them one of my kind of skill and knowledge levels are included in that um, and they're quick so that's one option the other option could be to do a different DK weight mitten club so there are other motifs other than Serbian motifs so I can look into other ethnic uh, styles and stuff or have some fun motifs as well you know kind of pumpkin spice latte reindeer that kind of thing um, and they would still be quick to make and it would offer more variety but obviously it might not be to everyone's taste and that can be quite hard to predict so pros and cons there as well and of course you wouldn't really get the strengths of using my heritage so much in that. Uh, another option is to have a club with varying weights. So we could still do the whole Norwegian Sabi Mitten thing but we could have one pattern in bulky, one in iron, one in DK and kind of step it down until it's very very fine. I am leaning towards that. I think that would be really fun because uh, we could really kind of step it up every time. But the disadvantage of that is that not all the mittens are going to be equally quick to make. Um, so yeah, I have some thoughts about that as well. Of course, that loses one advantage, but we'll still, it's still more for your personal development more so than gift knitting. So yeah. And the other option is, of course, to do varying weights and varying motifs. Um, so yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts about that. Uh, these are some of the options that I've come up with but I'm interested to hear what you think because I like to have a good design challenge and it's feasible, you know, it's going to happen next year if I work on it steadily up until then. It, we can totally make this an annual thing and I think that would be a lot of fun. We are still fighting with the lights today guys. It's been like amazing this whole morning for several hours of how this sort of muted light that's not too much and not too little and now the sun is coming out as soon as I click record. I'm just waiting for the dog in the leaf blower right now. How about you? And then, of course, there is the Eurekvel Mitten Knit Along. So it's a mystery knit along that I started, uh, was it 19th of November? And it, I'm not going to say finishes on the 3rd of December. It does not. That's when it begins. Because that's when the final clue is coming out. And then it finishes at the end of the year. So we have all of December to join this knit along. It's just a mystery up until the 3rd of December. But the l second to last clue has come out by the time this episode goes up so I am going to show you the second to last clue yeah so if you don't want to see the second to last clue or any of the clues quite frankly then look away and I will try to be as nondescript with my talking as can be and then you can come back when I am done that sounds good okay look away so this is what they look like I this if I can sound like I'm tooting my own horn a little bit, if I if I may. I think this is my personal favourite of my own designs. Like I said in the last episode, I always have some doubts about my own designs. Every time I release, I'm like, oh, nobody's going to like this one. This is going to be the one that kind of disappears in the whole thing. And no, this one uh, I feel very good about. I feel very, it, like, no matter if anyone or everyone loves this, it doesn't matter really. Because... It speaks to me. It's so warm and cold and dark and bright and nostalgic and kind of melancholic and just, you you know, you can see it. So yes, they're, like I said when I was kind of trying to describe this to people who were considering taking part in the mystery, 
I try to be as nondescript as possible but still saying that yes it is a Christmas mitten but no it doesn't have overly you know Christmas symbolism but there will be some and that is kind of what I mean you can see these are this is a sort of Christmas decoration that we do use in Scandinavia so it's there but it's not you know in your face it's not all over the mitten it's you can wear this in January for sure you know it's not that festive it's not like the you are the book mittens for instance I say you are the book and you are the mitten you can uh, say you le book and you le mitten as well it's just my dialect we tend to change the L sometimes because that's just what we do um yeah I just love these and I've seen some people just do this and mirror it that or just this and mirror it there depending on your preferences as long as it's because you love this so much you want to and that so much because you want to and not because you hate the other I think that's totally fine. I love when people modify my patterns, so I just, I love seeing that. I think pattern modifications is, that's to be encouraged. Because that's how designers are made in the end, it's when you start modifying and modifying and in the end you have your own ideas and that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm also going to show you the back side. I'm going to hide the last cue because that's not out yet. So that's the back side. I love this back side so much. I mean, I don't even know which side I like the most, the front or the back, to be honest. And you can of course see now what I mean by the different cuffs. Uh, I use different colours here and here. You can of course get away with just using two colours as you can see. But yeah, and this was kind of hard to explain how this kind of contrast colour here became the main colour here. But hopefully now it's very very obvious and hopefully it made sense from what I wrote to the image. Uh, I will take some self-criticism that I probably should have made very clear that the contrast colour for the hand should probably be the darker of the two given the motif. But I don't think that will make or break your mittens anyway. Um, I told you what colours I used, so you know you knew that um, and where I used them. So yeah, these are the mittens and I'm going to show you them in a different colour as well. So I tried two colourways and this was the one I started with because it had the most festive colours but the contrast was a bit too low so I decided not to go with it but I'll show you anyway. So for those of you who are looking away, keep looking away. Uh, <laughs> I love you guys, but seriously. So this is the other mitten. You can see what I mean with the contrast. Uh, the cuff kind of disappears a little bit. And it's not quite as dark here as either. I think, you know, this is the clear winner. I I mean, yeah, I, I felt, feel this way. I know you might prefer this one. This is certainly more my color scheme, but I guess they both are, quite frankly. So I'm gonna show you the back as well, hiding the last cue. So yeah. It actually looks really nice here. I like the palm side in these colours a great deal. So this is out. This is what we have so far and it's really exciting and um, I am really loving the discussions that we're having in the Valver group. That is, you know, where a knit along happens. So I encourage everybody to join there if you are knitting these mittens. Um, there are hashtags, of course, that you can use on Instagram as well, but the group is really where it's at. And there have been some very interesting discussions on color dominance. So I thought I'd make, some few, I'd make a few comments on that. I think I commented a bit on it in the last episode, but it doesn't hurt repeating. So uh, the general consensus is that you should have the color that pops held to the left. Now these might, it might be different from you, but generally the color that's held to the left, no matter how you knit it, whether you do two-handed or left-handed, continental, you should generally have the popping, contrasting color to the left, because it gets, it, it, it use, you use a bit more of it. You, use it, you knit it a bit looser so it pops more, it becomes more visible, it doesn't disappear into the background, to the main colour and you probably do want to see the contrast colour more. Now I'm going to hold off the mitten again to show what I mean how that becomes a bit difficult here because as you can see here, suddenly what's the contrast colour in the rest of the mitten becomes kind of the main colour in the mid motif and what do? Well you would probably benefit from changing the order of the colour when you're just working this little section. I mean, it's not that many rows, really. Uh, or you can just try to check that the white or whatever colour you're using here, the white is a bit looser. Just a little bit, not much. You might have to just kind of wing it a little bit. Uh, I kind of messed that up with the first mitten that I did, so I um, had to kind of tug it a bit and just like 
wear and it works it's not a big deal it's just like if you are as detail focused as i am that might be something that you'd want to do now that's not all i have to say about color dominance because there are kind of two schools on this issue and they are a bit at odds. So one is the international school that kind of come from the Far Isle tradition and as in the Shetland Islands as well uh, overall. And um, yeah, the UK and kind of how the UK has, you know, spread to the world throughout the latest centuries and thus their knitting traditions and that kind of rule of colour dominance. Ooh, big history lesson here today. <laughs> and often people have knitted two-handed there it's kind of what's been recommended at least in the 1900s and up until now that yes you throw and you throw with the main color that's the one you're most comfortable with because of course you throw and that's the english style knitting uh, or you could flick uh that's the right-handed knitting and then you do the left-handed continental knitting with the contrast color because that tends to be knitted looser for people so that will pop that is kind of the conventional international school but in the Norwegian school, we do it differently because here, first of all, we only knit continental, the whole throwing, flicking thing, not a thing. I never saw that until I moved here. Uh, it's not wrong. I'm just saying, given that continental is what it's all about there, then the school of thought is a bit different. First of all, the whole idea of two-handed knitting that leads to two different tensions is bad. It's bad. We look down upon it. I remember I came across that in a Arne and Carlos video. Uh, earlier this year and I thought that's oh, strange they're just going completely against the grain like everything I've read in my Alice Drama books they're just going against that and saying that this color dominance thing is a bad thing and it's undesirable and I thought about it for a great deal and I, I did a bunch of reading research and talked to people and generally I had to change my mind and agree with them actually yeah it because you know lots of people when they say that they have tried continental knitting after being very comfortable with the English style throwing or flicking knitting they say that they knit looser pretty much everybody says that when they start using continental after they've been using the other method they say I knit looser than I did before this method and so what you do you're knitting with one right hand that you throw or flick that is your tension and then you introduce this other hand that has a loose attention and you know loose attention means a bigger gauge if you were doing a whole garment you'd have two gauges and imagine doing a gauge swatch with that it would be a nightmare and depends on which of the two colors that you're using the most at the time is what gauge you get and ultimately what size you get and it's it can become quite a sizing nightmare so i've kind of started to discourage people who are just going to dip their toes into color work from doing two-handed color work it works lots of people have done it it's been done time and time again throughout the days the years um but i wonder if it's the best just because it's been done for a long time now i like to talk loud and yeah loud and loud <laughs> about tradition and what has been done and taking lessons from old wisdom that's kind of my that's what i do um i haven't been knitting for that long i don't know all the things but i listen to the people that i think do but in this case i will listen to arna and carlos because i think you'd want to avoid color dominance i think because that means different tension and ultimately different gauge you should try to knit the two colors as identical as you can but given that i think it's the best thing to make sure that if any of the colors differ at all make sure it's the contrast color because that is the one you want to be more visible because it does uh kind of happen a bit less you know in the whole chart so you do want to make that one pop if any of the colors pop but ideally try to make them as equal as you can i think that's the the message that i'm trying to convey here another knit along that i'm doing which i will only briefly be mentioning is the marius knit along that will be running all winter because uh, you're going to be making a little mariuses and if you do not know what the marius is it is the pattern i'm using in that cushion but for the knit along we'll only be making adult size garments so that is sweaters and tops and vests and jackets and hoodies and whatnot dresses even anything that goes in the torso for an adult or a teen uh is what will pass and only the marius i have to emphasize this although people have been really good at understanding what a marius is and not coming with the knockoff versions or say the older versions that the marius has been based upon you know a lot of satins are pattern but it is not a marius they're different that's just how it is so i really love that knit along it there's a lot of wisdom going on in the topic in the thread uh, in the ravelry group uh, i have so many people helping each other out it's 
a great place to be. So if you want to have a go at your first color work yoke, then that is definitely a cow to throw yourself into and you would not be too late in doing so. Another very exciting announcement I have to make, which some of you will know already if you follow me on Instagram, is that I have been published into a knitting publication. So you've heard me rave about Bra de Garn before. It is a Norwegian knitting magazine, kind of in the vein of yeah, the other kind of modern knitting magazines that you see internationally, you know, we have Len, we have Pom Pom, we have, Rip, we have you know, lots of magazines now, uh, but Norway has not had any such thing. We don't even have the kind of big commercial ones. We have yarn producers and designer companies that make their own booklets, which I love, but we don't have magazines that support and promote indie designers, indie dyers, other indie makers, except Brother Garn. And they have chosen to publish a mitten pattern of mine. So I'm just going to step outside and show you the mittens. I call them snövottid because I'm very literal like that. And yeah, I mean snow mittens and that's what they are. So their mood board was like full of Narnia things. Uh, you're supposed to be inspired by Narnia and magical forests and unicorns and all that stuff. Um, I don't remember there being unicorns in Narnia, but I really liked that theme. I thought it was really inspiring and I was like... Wow, let's assume that the White Witch had mittens. What would they look like? And I just kind of, yeah, I jumped into my reference books and charted up and thought about it and did it all in one go. And I felt like that can't be any good. I just did it in one go. I haven't even, because usually I like to design it and I will forget about it a bit and look at it again and check myself and be like, yes, this is good enough. I was like, I just blah, 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 blah. And they liked it. And that is so exciting. And it's been so well received on Instagram. So. I just want to thank you all, it means a lot, it got me very excited and very proud and you know, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say, I just yeah wanted to announce that. Some practical information though is that the pattern, um, obviously being published in a Norwegian publication, will only be Norwegian for a change, but only for a limited time. This magazine is awesome in the sense that they return the full rights of the pattern to the designer. So while the pattern will always be available in this magazine and always be available in Norwegian, you can eventually buy it off of me in English. But not anytime soon, so if you can understand Norwegian and you do want it right away, then I highly suggest getting that pattern because, well, now is the winter and six months from now it's not going to be. And it's a great magazine. If you haven't checked it out already, I can only, you know, tell you good things about it. Um, I think it's really good and they've been so patient with me as well because they basically gave me the news when I was traveling they handed you know this mailed out the deadlines and stuff like that when I was traveling there were so many times I was not able to do things when perhaps I should have been because I was always traveling you know there was Bergen, Oslo, Stavanger, Vancouver, New York you meant you name it uh, there's always been something and I still managed to do this and I have to thank you know the editors for that as well you guys are awesome um yeah i just wanted to mention that i am very excited and very proud and just yeah i've known about this for a long time i'm very happy to finally be able to tell you guys and i really want to try to get published more and perhaps more internationally as well i have something cooking i went somewhere yesterday and had a chat and we'll have more of a chat tomorrow and we'll see what comes of it but yeah there might be more interesting stuff happening i have another exciting announcement to make as well i don't know uh how many are interested in this and i wasn't sure if i was going to announce it but since i will be announcing it on the day that i will be doing it i might as well i'm doing vlogmas never done a vlog every day in this and that month whatever but i will be doing that this year this december so if you don't know, Vlogmas is a thing that a lot of vloggers do, whether they knit or whatever, in December. So you make an episode every day up until Christmas. I suppose you could make episodes after Christmas Eve as well and after Christmas Day and just kind of vlog your holiday. Um, but the intent is kind of a sort of a calendar, advent calendar format, you know. So the first 24 days, I believe, is the thing. I don't know how likely I am to keep up with it because 
I will spend half the time here and half the time in Norway. I will have most of the time here with my sister sleeping on the floor and being around in general. And I don't know how much she wants to be part of it, but I'm going to try. And if we just get the first week of December, then at least that's more than any, nothing. And I mean, if you're thinking to yourself, like, I can't keep up with all this. It's enough that you do a weekly episode, Ellie, but I think I can't keep up with this and I don't want to miss out on anything, any nitty goodness and I can reassure you the vlogmas is only going to be bonus material. If you only are interested in my knitting content that will still be on the podcast. You will not be missing out on anything knitting related if you choose to not watch my vlogmas videos. If anything my vlogmas videos might be a bit too niche because that is going to be my platform to talk about other things than knitting you know the other things that i'm into i'm sure i give the impression here sometimes given that my room is basically a craft room and all i talk about here is knitting that that is all i am and all i do but there is you know there are other things to my life as well not much more but yeah i i like books i like films i like tv shows i like music and so i'll be covering like scandinavian traditions as well um not with a particular religious focus that's not me but you could still watch if you're interested it's just it's gonna be for everyone that's what i'm trying to say but yeah it will just focus on kind of my day-to-day -day life so if you're not interested that is completely okay it's fine you don't have to watch what you don't want to watch and that is something i have wanted to comment on in general because because i do still see a small tendency that there are people who are subscribed who still dislike my videos and you are free to do that but you are also free to just not be subscribed and watch things that you like and i think i have been so very fortunate to be mentioned by so many prominent knitting podcasters and i don't even know what to say other than thank you but i can understand if it comes with a feeling of you know the fear of missing out aka fomo so you feel like you have to be subscribed to my channel because everybody's mentioning it. So if you're going to know what's going on in the knitosphere, sphere, you have to watch, even if you don't like it. And you don't. You're not going to miss out if you don't watch this podcast, if you don't like it. That is absolutely fine. You can watch something that you like instead. I I would hate for you to be subscribed to the podcast and like, oh, that's another skin in episode I have to watch. Ugh, let's just talk about that stuff again. You know, then just don't. I mean, if someone mentions my podcast, what they say is pretty much what you need to know. Unless you're interested in what else I do, then don't bother. I, I wouldn't want you to feel like you have to watch if you don't want to. And I have so many people that say they do want to and want me to cover this and that. You know, I had so many people wanting me to tell them everything about my Vancouver and New York trip. And so I did. And then I had this other bunch that was like, I don't want to hear about this. Where's the knitting? You know, can't please everyone. So, I, yeah, that is something I wanted to cover. But yes, for all your viewing pleasure, I'm now going to get into my FOs, my finished objects. The first thing that you will see is the No Frill sweater. So I am actually wearing it. I'm going to stand up so you can see it a bit more in detail. Uh, it's quite short, but that was actually according to the pattern now that I think about it. Uh, Forgive me for all the fashion choices today, but this jumper is keeping me so warm and toasty because it is miserably cold in London today. And this sweater is huge. I feel so ridiculously 80s when I wear this, but it's comfy. I think the mohair would bother me in terms of prickliness if it wasn't this cold. But I find there's a relationship between prickliness and temperature. I only find uh, various fibres, be it alpaca or sheep wool, to be itchy if it's too warm to actually wear it and today it's cold so i can wear my mohair wool sweater and so i want to talk about the wool again mentioned it last time but i'm using pickles not knit picks pickles pure wool it's a i think they call it elderberry it's a kind of plum purple color it's uh, quite cold and i held it double with sunless silk mohair albeit a thicker silk mohair than i should have used so it is a bit dense I like that, it keeps me warm. And the silk my hair is burgundy, and so it gets this amazing texture. I'm gonna show you up close, because the silk gives it this incredible shine to it, if you can see that. The mohair obviously is what brings about this halo, but then the blue tones is coming from that cold plum color. And obviously the burgundy from the silk mohair. 
and I just love this effect. I this sweater. I've been talking for so long about wanting a basic raglan sweater and that is definitely what I got in this and definitely something that I needed and I will be making a couple of others because I need just something big and baggy to throw on when it's freezing in here because this is a British house, house so the walls are very you know that's what they do here they stack bricks and put a wallpaper on it um I'm very lucky to have double glass windows though so I'm not going to complain it's actually pretty okay in here this the standard of this flat is not that bad but it needs some more hair, you know, it needs some more in the walls, right? Oh God, can you imagine all the moths? I take that back. So my second finished object is the Eurobook mittens. So here they are. Uh, they're no different from last time other than the thumbs because I made the thumbs this morning. It was just gonna be a quick thing that I did before recording, uh, though thumbs always take longer than you think, so. And then there was this issue with my food delivery that was supposed to arrive between 10 and 11 and it literally just arrived and it's nearly 2 o'clock. Yeah, so I'm a bit delayed today. Anyway, I finished them. It's a finished object. It's the second pair I've knitted of my own pattern, Yule Book, Yule Book, whatever you want to call them, Yule Book. I have become the source of Scandinavian pronunciation, apparently, even though I pronounce things a slightly different way because I speak a very strange dialect. Those of you from Norway will know. Anyway. So there we are, they're done. I knitted them in Tukey wool, their fingering weight yarn, which I can highly recommend. It's very nice and woolly and rustic, yet smooth. And just, I love it. it. I mean, I was gonna say it's so underestimated, but it's actually not, because people are talking about this a lot lately. And I think it's very well deserved. Definitely falls into the camp of Hillesvog, Ask, Roma, Finurgan, you know, my favourite yarns. So there's no wonder that I love this yarn as well. And it's comparable to, you know, Spindrift and Two Ply Jumper Weight, uh, the two main Shatland yarns. So also interchangeable and compatible. Yadi yadi. I think I'm going to put these away now. But, you know, these are the day mittens. It's a pattern that I have that you can buy on Ravelry. Very festive, very, you know, all the things. And there is a third finished object as well. I can't believe it. I've been very productive lately. Not really, but I've had, you know, this is the pro of being a completely non-monogamous knitter, is that suddenly you finish all the things. And I have this bizarre goal of finishing all the things before Christmas. That's not gonna happen. I usually try to clear my needles at New Year's. That's kind of my thing. I've not succeeded with that this year and I'm not at all beating myself up over it. I've gone through some pretty, pretty icky stuff this year. And on top of that, I have let myself enjoy some really, really nice things this year to kind of be good to myself and let myself have positive, positive experiences as well. So that is why I have not gotten around to finish them. And I think that's okay. Who's the knitting police is gonna tell me otherwise, you know? So that is the goal. I'm, I'm gonna aim towards it, but if I don't succeed, it's not a failure. It's a good attempt. So I have another finished object, the third finished object for this week, and that's what counts. So there they are. It's the forest pig mittens. Oh, I'm so glad that there are so many of you who have just the same silly kind of sense of humor that I have, because I was like, these look like a forest pig, and it's like a bear, obviously. It's a bear that I actually do live in the forest, although there are forest pigs. They have forest pigs in Sweden, apparently. I didn't know that, but yeah, forest pig mittens are done. <laughs> so this is a design by, oh my God, I can't remember her name. I know her name very, very, very well. I'll put it down here. She's a brilliant mitten designer. Have you seen like her dolphin mittens and mitts? I've been drooling over those for a long time. But then she came up with this mystery knit, knit, knit along. It's done now, all the clues have come out. So and I was like having some doubts when I heard about this because I heard about this knit along very soon after or just before I had announced my mitt knit along. All the clue dates had been announced and I was like very much ready for the whole thing. And I'm like, there's another color work mystery knit along that's gonna overlap. 
like I don't want to be unintentionally competing with someone else's market so to speak you know that's the thing that I'm very much concerned with uh, when it comes to knitting and somehow sometimes you have accidentally the same ideas and they come out on the same time and it can be a bit unfortunate and here I was a little bit nervous but it turns out they only marginally overlapped I think the last clue of these came out on the 22nd of November and my first clue came out on the 19th so it's just a little bit there so I decided to forgive myself for that and yeah and took part in it and posted a lot about it so hopefully you know the world have seen this amazing mitten knit along I just can't say no to good color work mitten mystery knit along honestly and this is the pattern I'm gonna give you a close-up it's got this amazing forest motif with all the animals I think these are like the tracks through the forest up until this little cabin on the top which you know speaks to me so much I couldn't be happier with this motif and you see the forest pigs in the back <laughs> I'm just gonna dub them my forest pig mittens I think forest pigs should be everywhere right now yeah you can just read in the podcast forest pig skander podcast Oh, forest pig everywhere, all the things. Uh, what else was I going to say? I have used Black Yarns St Kilda, which is a lace weight, but it's wool and spun. And I always find that when it's wool and spun and non-superwash and all that jazz, weights don't count. I don't believe in yarn weights. I come from the land where we say normal, thinner, thicker, two plies, thicker two plies, three ply. Uh, we don't really have a system for it, we just kind of look at the recommended gauge, the meterage but with this yarn you can vary the gauge and just so much, you use it for so many things and you get the lightest mittens ever, these weigh 40 grams that's less than a 50 gram skein, if that wasn't obvious from it being called a 50 gram skein but anyway, it's light, so I'm just going to try them on they do kind of showcase why I don't like the sore thumb method, because that assumes that your thumb comes out from the side of your hand uh, anatomically it really doesn't because like if you hold your hand like this it sits super well but if I do this it has a way of rotating and coming around this way that makes sense I kind of had to force it now but in time this is kind of how I end up wearing it when I move my thumb that's not a criticism of the pattern I love this pattern I think these thumbs are a pretty neat feature and I think if I'd used a recommended yarn even the mittens would kind of have a bit more when I say structure to it, it will be a bit firmer and stay a bit on in this shape. So it's just some faults I'm having about a construction method. The pattern is lovely. I think it's really cool. I put them on the wrong hands because now these are on the palm. That is one of the downsides of the sideways thumb too. If you're an idiot, <laughs> then you end up doing things like that. So I'm going to show you two the right way. Ah, oh, God. There we are. Forest pig in the palm. That's how it's supposed to be. So yeah, very happy with these. I am considering letting it be a Christmas present. I'm just gonna have to narrow it down who it's gonna go to. And I think if I can recommend any modification, it's probably to go down a uh, half, maybe just a quarter needle size for the cuff because it is a bit on the loose side. I don't mind, but there's already one recipient of these mittens that I had to exclude because I know that person does not like mitten cuffs that are at all loose. But they're really not that loose. I thought when I was knitting, I was like, that's going to be really loose because it's the same stitch can as knit, and how is that going to work? It actually worked out pretty okay. It's just like a tad little detail, a small thing that I thought I'd mention if you are considering knitting these because that's definitely something I would recommend. I will say that my mitten look a bit rounder due to my um, foam board blocker that I pretty much use across the board. Uh, and it gave it a pretty nice feature. And the other thing is that the yarn has been dyed by the Knitting Goddess because Blackie Yarn and the Knitting Goddess had a bit of a collaboration. So if you're amazed by this dark colour, you should totally check out the Knitting Goddess yarns because she is one of my favourite UK dyers for sure and one of the best enablers ever. Like she can make me buy yarn like that. And it, I mean, it's not that hard. We'll get to that. Um, but still, it's like every time she can just give me a new reason to buy yarn, I'm like, this sounds very reasonable. And now it just got very dark. It's winter. It's winter in London. I should light some candles. Maybe start recording in the evening and it's going to be an awful yellow light, but it will be a nice atmosphere. But that is an atmosphere I will be saving for Vlogmas. So there. Now I think it's time to move into works in progress. And I don't know how I feel about this work in progress because... Uh, 
I'm just gonna show it to you. So this lives in my amazing bag of the people I forgot what they're called, but it's down here. They actually sell these bags at Loop now. I saw them yesterday. Uh, I had a really good day yesterday. I just spent them at various yarn shops in London and drinking wine. You sometimes see new days like that. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway. What is this? <laughs> It's really not that many months ago since I'd said I'm probably never gonna do a vanilla sock It's just I think it would bore me just doing plain stocking net in magic loop Like I can do plain stocking net in the round if I'm doing like a Marius or this sweater Here we are and you know what? 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 I don't know who I am I've shown this to like knitting friends of mine in London and they just give me this kind of half surprised half disappointed look <laughs> It's like, what are you doing? So I was given this amazing Felici yarn by Knit Picks from uh, Shamika, who I stayed with in New York, who has a podcast. And yeah, I am doing vanilla socks and I don't know what happened. I just needed something basic to knit as I'm marking because I'm marking roughly 200 essays with 2,000 words each in a university module from second year bachelor students in psychology and I mean there are only four essay questions there are only so many versions of the same answer you can get so it's very boring and I need something to knit before I become too aggressive and like I need to give them you know the benefit of the doubt and stuff when marking so to be nice when I'm marking I'm doing some plain socks and I mean they're anything but plain because these are it's the time traveler colorway basically nitpicks way of cheekily incorporating some Doctor Who-ness and the yarn just keeps on giving, so I just keep on knitting and they're becoming knee highs now. Like, they're not gonna cross my knee, but they're kind of reaching up there now. And I think I'm gonna leave, like I have a bit more than four stripes left of this yarn. And I think I'll use three stripes for the rib and leave the rest because I don't know how many I'll have left for this. That's why I started knitting this sock as well. Oh, yes, so <laughs> I don't know what to say. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm like holding up these plain socks. I don't mean plain as anything bad, I just, as I said in the beginning, my kind of motivation to start this podcast was because all I kept seeing was vanilla socks knitted in amazing hand dyed yarns and I was like, well, what is the knitter doing in all this, you know, is there, what challenges are we giving ourselves, are we just knitting basic patterns and I don't mean basic in a bad way either, but you know, this sweater for instance is basic and I love it, it's a raglan. You know, and these socks, it's just stocking that sock. It's a very basic recipe, uh, but it's showcasing the yarn in an amazing way. And I understand now that the appeal of self-striping is that you just want to get to the next stripe and the next stripe and the next stripe. And it's just very rewarding every time a stripe comes up and you finish it. So, sorry I'm a bit late to the party, everyone. But, you know, not going to stop now. So, I actually have this other yarn from... Um, friend of mine SS I know from the interwebs and I came across her yarn in New Jersey and this colorway is called Santa's Workshop and she's Critium Handmade on Etsy I showed it to you last time actually but it doesn't hurt repeating because I think that's what I'm gonna cast on next and just keep on doing these socks because I'm still trying to do the box of socks even though I only have six pairs done and four on the needles so I need to cast on another two and finish them all. It's a mad goal to try to finish half the box of socks in one month. And maybe that will be the theme of the uh, vlog uh, vlogmas videos. That and my awfully boring marking and all the cheese I'm eating whilst doing it. Who knows? <laughs> I am really just selling this vlogmas, aren't I? The other thing I wanted to mention about these socks is that I have been pretty lucky with the heels. So let's talk about the heels because look at that. Look at how the stripes are just kind of doing in the heel. So, blah, blah, blah. I am doing the fish lips kiss heel because I like it. But I know that when I do a stitch count for vanilla socks rather than color work socks, the heel becomes very small to me. I learned that when I did the mercury socks. Granted, not vanilla socks, but requiring equal equivalent stitch count. And I know with myself that with my color work socks that have about 70 stitches, give or take two stitches, um, 
I'm usually, you know, I get about, say, 35 stitches for the heel. And 35 stitches is grand. That tends to fit me really well. But here I ended up with 30, and that won't do. So I had some cheeky increases here. So I did two just here, just before starting the heel. And two just here. Like You can hardly see them. Because... I just do that sometimes. You know, I do it kind of like I make one left and right and whatever, but I make it look like I had done them in previous rows because it makes it a bit tight and it's a bit hidden. And it's just, it's a very bad idea, really. I, what I should have done in hindsight is knit uh, Becky Sorensen's New Depth heel because it comes with a gusset before and after the heel. Uh, but I think if I were to do that, I'd probably do it for a it's, it works for either sock, but I would start by doing it on a cuff down sock just because it would be hard for me to estimate just how much length I would need to add for the gusset, although presumably I could just measure my row gauge. I don't know why I'm saying this stuff. I'm wrong. Uh, so yeah, I think it would have been better had I just followed her recipe, but I had just finished a white stripe and I didn't really feel like riffing back. Uh, so I just cheated it a bit. But once I was done with the heel, I kind of went more the gusset way, if you can see that. And these are the two increases, no, decreases here, and I have an equivalent on the other side. And that worked, because uh, I needed a bit more space beyond the heel for where my foot is quite wide, still, as any foot. Um, but the main thing that is super awesome is how the colors worked out. That was the main thing I was gonna talk about, the other details of it, so and so. That was pure luck. It was when I'd finished a white stripe, I looked at it and was like, oh, well, I'll start a stripe in the heel, it'll be nice. And I was just finishing half the heel, I was like, no. There's enough colour for the whole half, and then I did the other half, and then and then it just worked out. And there is nothing of this orange red that is bleeding into this beige here. Amazing. I was nearly that lucky with the other sock as well. I tried to kind of force it by doing a equal like colour tip so it's not the same color i don't care about the matching as such so i just try to do as much of this color as this one so that when i'd finish the stripe that's the equivalent of the other one i could just start a new color with the heel and i did that and it was a purple heel and then a grayish blue though it kind of bled a little bit into the next stripe as you can see here it's a bit a little bit coming into here before i got into the into the white stripe here but that is fine i just thought i was so lucky with that i'm never gonna try to replicate that again because that was just dumb luck maybe i will have two more for each gains i've said too much so yeah uh other things i am doing is going up a needle size as i work up my leg because my leg is a bit chubbier as we go so i think it was roughly from the yellow stripe up to the red where i went up a quarter needle size so from 2.5 to 2.75 and then from here and so on i'm doing a three millimeter but please don't take notes of my needle size because i am a tight knitter the gauge that you might res uh, achieve without those needles will probably or maybe not be the same so check your gauge i don't know what gauge i'm doing these at actually i i mean i measured it but i'm um, you know socks expand when you wear them and block them and all that stuff and so i've knitted them very 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 tight with a lot of negative ease because of things and stuff i've heard about socks uh growing with wear and all that stuff so those are my vanilla time traveler pippi long stocking long stockings i can't believe this just happened i have another work in progress as well it is the blue rose socks we haven't seen them for a while so i picked them up because well they are socks and they can help me finish my box of socks although i'm kind of worried i won't be able to take photos of the socks in the box because i'm not going to bring the box to norway and i'm going to be in norway at that time but here is the stocking in question it's a very long sock basically so it's on the blocker but obviously the blocker only goes up to here and then it's like a bit funny but it looks a lot nicer on the blocker than with that because of all the rib makes it look a bit silly i have modified this thing so much because i don't i want to say it's not the best written pattern but it's really just a very norwegian pattern where you just kind of have to figure it out and so a lot of the kind of decreases that happen down here in the rib i did it my way and everybody stopped singing <laughs> and then 
I did the short row heel. I think I did the Fishlips Kiss heel, but who knows? I might have just done the German short row heel. That would be nice if I could remember when I'm doing the second one. But I mean, a short row heel is a short row heel. Anyway, I would guess the German short row heel because that's the one I know by heart. It's a Hillesvog pattern because I used a kit from Hillesvog. It's in their Fjord yarn which is their, I want to say, light DK weight sock yarn. It's rustic yarn with nylon. I love it. It's perfect for color work. I mean, look at this. I wish I could say this was my design, but it is not. It is something you have to buy the kit to get. So yeah, um, I kind of winged it from here downwards, quite frankly. I was just kind of doing my thing and I think that worked out. And so I have to do another one and remember what I did, but that'll be fine. I do still have this sock. I have not knitted on the other sock much this week. I just not have the time. I have put myself kind of on a deadline to publish the pattern for this next week. Because I said I was aiming for an early December week a release and I'll be aiming for that. So if it comes out before the next episode, then just have a look at my Ravelry design page, you know, just keep checking. I will of course post about it on Instagram. There will be an early discount code for early buyers because as ever I just uh, want to support the people that support me if that makes sense uh, it's a yeah a kind of a given take thing there that I feel like it's fair because you guys help me when you buy the pattern early on by making it trend and making it visible to people and so I want to give back and I guess also encourage that and I think that's fair across the board so yeah uh, that's kind of my thoughts about that. I've talked about that length before. Now the other thing is that I have a number of patterns to give away in this episode and there's no way that I can do one thread for each in the Ravelry group the way I normally do. So I'm going to give all the patterns a lovely spotlight here and put them all in one thread and what you will do is answering my prompt where you post a pattern that you like with a photo fitted into it uh, in the post uh, a pattern that you find just gives you that ooey gooey Christmas feeling or whatever you celebrate this time of year anything that gives me that you that feeling of this time of year whatever that means to you I want to see that you may have something in mind you may introduce me to something you haven't seen before I just think that would be really cool to see and I totally came up with this as I was saying it out loud anyway so what I'll be doing is listing all the patterns in that topic and you can answer by saying I'd like all of them and give your answer with the photo. That doesn't mean that you'll get all of them, it just means that you don't want to be exempt from any of them, if that makes sense. You just say that I'm interested in all of them or whatever wording you like. I just want to see that the people that take part in this want the patterns. So, okay, I need to make this a bit clearer. Uh, if there's a pattern here you're not interested in, you just list the ones you're interested in. So there will be seven patterns. The list of them will be up on that group. You can copy that list and delete the ones you don't want to be in the draw for. This is not going to increase your chances of getting the pattern that you want. Because I will be doing a draw per pattern. So whatever you put in your post is not going to affect your likelihood of winning. So it's just for you to basically remove something that you don't feel like you should be in the draw for if you're not interested. If you wouldn't have entered the giveaway had it just been that pattern for instance. That sounds awfully rude. I just want the pattern to go to someone who wants it. So if you're interested in all of them just say all of them. If you just want to be in the draw for say a selected three you just write the selected three and so when I do the random number generator I'm just gonna be like ah, okay that sock pattern I'm gonna do the random number generator for that I draw a number the number I get I'll jump to that post if I see that you've mentioned that pattern you will win it if you haven't mentioned it I will move on to the next make sense hopefully that made sense so yeah so the first pattern is the spellbound socks so this is the photo of that. They will be in the draw. I'm just going to have to be chop 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 here. The next pattern is by Anna Freebay. It is the Pedula Kalu. No, I have socks. I have no idea how to pronounce that. But you know, I love Anna's sock designs. I have done two of them this year. One as a test knitter and one as someone taking part in her mystery knit along. I was going to do the Fergus socks as well, but I don't, never got around to it. I don't think it will happen, but I think they're really nice. But these socks are up for grabs. You can join 
the giveaway for that. And then there is a shawl that I have no way of pronouncing. I'm just going to put it here. It's by John, aka Beauty Chell, who wants to have a giveaway for that. So there you are. That is in the drawer. And then there is the Phobia shawl by Nordic Stitches who also has a English language Norwegian podcast that you should check out if you haven't already and she designs a lot as well so this is her shawl design and she's giving away a copy to any of you guys and not only that she has another pattern to give away as well which is the Nordic no it's the frozen mystery pattern and I can't tell you anything about that pattern because it is a mystery knit along she doesn't even tell you what kind of pattern it is. It's pretty exciting. And she's using Arctic yarns. And uh, yeah, she has the Arctic Knitting Podcast. And she has the yarn for this mystery knit along that's going to be running in December. And then there's another shawl pattern that I have no way of pronouncing the name of. That is by Becky Sorensen of Soprano Knits. The genius behind the new Death Steel. So there's a shawl for that. And I, I mean, if you've seen Becky's post on Instagram, you will know how proud she is of that pattern and it just shows and it's just like one of her like top creations and she's just like sprawling around in it and it's just great so I mean it's up for grabs and then Amelia of Arctic Yarns has her own pattern which is called I want to get this right Winter Crown I don't know why that was so hard for me to remember but Winter Crown is her new hash pattern which I think is stunning and I totally need to pick your brains Amelia about hat design because I don't know why I find that so hard it's like one of the things I've been knitting for the longest it's a great hat design for sure so that will be in the drawer as well so hopefully you get the idea there are seven patterns that there will be one winner of for each I'll be drawing a random number generator and picking the post in that thread uh, and unless you just list specific patterns that you want you'll be in the draw for all of them and before I get into acquisitions because yes there is a few I'm just going to thank those of you who have been so, so generous in the uh, grant a wish thing that's been going on on Instagram. So if you don't know, the grant a wish is basically people reposting this image that gives the instructions, which is basically if you see someone who has uh, voiced a wish that they have, you can gift it to them. You can send it to them in the mail. You can gift it to them on Ravelry. I can't believe I'm using the word gift as a verb right now. I know a lot of people are doing it. I think grammatically speaking it's not accurate, but I mean that's how word come to be, right? So you give people things and for each wish that you grant, you get to wish, make a wish, wish a wish I was gonna say, you get to make a wish. And so I've granted a couple of wishes and therefore I made some and the response was pretty overwhelming. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I had to replenish my Ravelry wish, wish list of patterns, so thank you guys so much. Um, and I hope that the things that I have sent out will reach people because it took me a while to send it because I've been ill and I'm on recovery right now. So yeah, I just thought that was worth mentioning if anyone, you know, wants to take part in that because it's a really cool thing. Great, I am close to wrapping up the episode and now the light is awesome. But that is great because now we're going to do acquisitions and we need good light for that because we're going to look at yarn. So yeah, I have been a bit here and there. So I think I'll just start with my shopping yesterday. I went to Loop and bought more chagri needles because you could always use more chagri needles. And yeah, I am quite the convert now. I used to prefer my Addy needles for Magic Loop and now I'm all about the chagri. I was always worried that the cable for Chiagu would be too stiff because I used to find that the old stiff plastic cable for needles that I had in the past, like equivalent of pony and that kind of thing, was too stiff to work magic loop for me. But I actually find that with Chiagu they work really well. The ones with the bend I wouldn't use but these, it kind of just overlaps in a very nice way so the fact that the cable is rigid is actually helping me more so than not because every time I pull the cable out and push it back in on the other side it's just like an extension of the needle so it works really well for me I, I know there are other people who have the complete opposite experience and I've heard both things and I was really baffled by people who said what I'm saying now when I didn't like the child use for magic leaf so it's it's weird but yeah that's totally working out for me right now and I've been getting the odd like messages and stuff about how in the past when I made videos I'd say the opposite I said I didn't like chagu because it's too stiff and people were like oh how it's so funny we disagree on that I like being really friendly about it uh, but I just kind of want to take that as an opportunity to say that 
any comments on an old video? Um, it's an old video. Uh, it seems like there are the odd few that are not aware of that and I don't know how I can't respond to that without sounding like a huge idiot because I'm like... I, for, for most cases, I don't know what you're talking about. If you make a reference to a video that's any older than this month, I'm like... Yes, what sweater am I wearing that episode? I don't remember. Do I have to watch? Uh, you're referring to those mittens at some point in the video. I'm like, I make mittens all the time. I don't know what, what you're talking about. And, um, so that is one thing I need to mention that old comments and old videos, I most of the time I have no idea what you're talking about because I don't remember. You're not talking to Ellie in the past, you're talking to Ellie here and now and Ellie here and now doesn't remember Ellie in the past at all. Uh, but for things like my opinions, I change opinions all the time. I try new things, I explore, I learn new things and so something I might voice in the past I might feel different about now. And that includes the Targa needles. I've changed my mind a lot about those lately so yeah uh just remember that old videos are old videos if you choose to watch my videos back to back just remember that things that i say then may not apply now this is live ellie as far as i'm concerned but it's not when you watch this many many months from now for instance uh which may seem obvious but it may not be if you're not actually a podcaster yourself so that's kind of why i thought it would be worthwhile mentioning because i probably wouldn't have thought about it either i remember when i was going back watching old videos of some other knitting podcasters when I really uh, enjoyed their videos and wanted to watch all of them. I don't think I thought about that. So it's funny how these things work. It's such a, a new way of communicating like that transcends time and space and everything. And it's like, whew. anyway, accusations, I'm rambling. So the other thing I bought at Leap was this little booklet, which is Muhu Birds. I don't know if you know about Muhu, I think it is the name of an island in Estonia that has a very particular design aesthetic. It's very, it's a little pink, a little bird. So this is very representative. I'm going to try to show you uh, some things without revealing all the things. It's a little bit kind of more embroidery type stuff. I think this is embroidery. Uh, cross stitch, there's cross stitch, cross stitch burbs. It's not all knitting, but obviously a chart is a chart, you know. Here's some knitting. Uh, hee hee hee, look at that. So they are just crazy bananas with the colors and I think it is fabulous. I'm no, I have no clue how I'm gonna use this. But you know, it's not the, yeah. I, I can spoil myself a little bit with the old booklet with color work chart. I think that's fine. It would totally fit well with my Latvian mitten books and booklets and all that gels. The other book that I finally got in the mail is Silk Road Socks. This book, it's as amazing as it looks on the outside. It's a book that's been reworked, I think. Uh, and it's socks that are inspired by the Silk Road and you know the carpets that they had back then, as you can see here. Just the aesthetic here is, I don't even know what to tell you. Like they go through history and, oh, I just turned yellow. Anyway, so you get the idea what they're going for here. I'll try to show you some photos of these while I'm rambling. So these are some socks. These, I think, could be my first custom from this book. Though I'm a pro at buying books that I don't cast them from at all because that's the kind of person I am. And yeah, it's just full of amazing socks. And then, you know, you hear me talk a lot about using non-superwash yarn and not liking the slick yarns with silk and superwash marine and all that stuff. I think for this, these socks, I would go straight for that. I would probably be using a superwash blue face Leicester. Possibly even with a bit of silk. I've never come across a base like that. Or maybe I have. But that would be perfect. Something that is very slick and strong. Shiny. Has a bit of silk. Why not? Uh, I think that would be perfect for this. I wouldn't use something that pills necessarily. But I would definitely go with... Yeah, I can imagine like a lot of my favourite Superwash Blue Face Lester sock yarns would be perfect for these. So, yeah. Another book in my library. I've actually been re like kind of organizing my library. So I put all my booklets down here now. So you can see there are a couple of them here. So the booklets go here and the books go up here. You can't see them, but there are a lot of books. I've done some videos of them in the past. So 
and the later books I just mentioned in the odd few episode and I might do a walkthrough of books again but those episodes tend to become very long and we're not in focus but who cares because I'm going to talk about the other book I got which is Top Down which is Reimagining Satin Sleeve Design by Elizabeth Dorothy pronunciation not my jam and uh, yeah and if you don't know this construction method um you did top down so you do front panels back panel and join them in the round when you go under the arm uh you may not join in the round if you're doing a cardigan unless you're like me and you like sticky but yeah that's the general way and then you are left with a shape that resembles this and then you work the sleeves and there are some really good illustrations for how the sleeve is worked. Let's see if I can find it. There we are. So if you see these photos here, another one here, you can see how it, you sort of go back and forth. You do short rows by picking up the edges as you go. And it's brilliant. I've come across this last year when I was working under Satellan's patterns. And yeah, it's brilliant. I think it's the most flattering construction shape of all. It's there are equivalent uh, sleeves that are for sewn in, so you know that's when you you do the sleeve bottom up and then you sew it in after you made it. It's kind of the most traditional way of doing it, and it's what the pros do. But I care a great deal about knitting being as pleasant of a process as a product. Um, so for me, given I don't enjoy seeming and get nervous about a sweater maybe not fitting the body uh, sleeve not fitting the body I would feel a lot more calmer if I can use this method so I'm gonna let good old Elizabeth tell me what to do here and yeah the book is in collaboration with Quince & Co and I love Quince & Co and everything they do and their aesthetic and their yarn and just so shall we address the elephant in the room I just like adjust my camera so you can see it all in all its glory so I got this yarn on Holst's Black Friday sale, which is a bit weird for me because I don't usually do Black Friday sales and it's not for any reason that has any judgment to it or anything. It's just we don't do Black Friday here in Europe because we don't have Thanksgiving. And I also feel funny about having a day that is just like about shopping just because it's of reduced price. And I, it, it can be quite a crazy busy day, so I just like staying indoors for that reason. But I had already started filling up my host cart after they'd emailed me about shade cards that they had in stock. So that tab, among all the other like 50 tabs that I've opened at one time, because I'm that kind of person, um, was already there. It's already something I had planned. Uh, and I didn't know what the Black Friday sale was going to be. I didn't know what the sale level was going to be. So given that I kind of made the decisions when I was cool, you know, when I wasn't like, oh my god, this is so cheap, I can only get it now kind of thing. Is that you, you, we can all be carried away by that and that yeah, can be fun too. But I feel like it's a decision I made when I was still in my cool. So it's like, I think if I can make any uh, recommendations for those kinds of things it's to make the decisions when you know that you're cool when you know that you don't have a right flashing in front of you and kind of think about then what you want and what you need and so you're not buying anything that you're not going to use and that is probably the reason why the cones that you're seeing here let's talk about the cones it's probably why they are in pretty uninteresting colors because this colour, I am so glad I got a cone of this. It's the colour that they are about to discontinue. Which makes me almost regret I didn't get several. I'm actually being serious now. Because it's the only natural white that they have. It's a very yellowed white. They only do the bleached white. And they've been trying out this colour for a while. Uh, it's not even part of my shade card. But now they are discontinuing it. Which is a shame. Because I, their bleached white isn't so white that I don't like it but I still prefer a natural white and this ecru colorway is it called you can see it in here it's a very nice and natural white so I'm very glad I have that and yeah buying yarn by the pound now you guys the other is a light gray so this colorway is called silver gray because you know I the basic colors is why I need the box there's so many times I've looked at my stash and be like why don't I have any basic colours that I can mix all the single skeins I have of this type of wool? 
it's just like i don't have any plans for this stuff it's just something i always think i should just have more of that to grab because i like living in my own yarn shop i generally do support the idea of just getting the stuff that you need when you need them but i do struggle with yarn availability in the uk because a lot of the yarns that i like are from outside the uk and shipping costs can be quite high so if i'm going to order for every project given how many projects i do a year that would be quite insane and actually wouldn't be very cost effective for me so that is kind of how i've decided to do that uh, because i tend to use the same kind of yarn for most of the time and whole super soft is one of my defaults so for me to have a bunch of that uh, yeah i don't it doesn't feel like stash you know it doesn't feel like one of those things that i'm itching to use up like some of my other yarns so i got flannel gray and you will recognize flannel gray because i use flannel gray just put that over here look how nice they stack look at that i use flannel gray of course in my flea card again the color scheme here is becoming quite noticeable again i just have to apologize for the light i'm relying on daylight that's how i've been rolling i might get some studio lights at some point but given i don't actually have a studio i don't know how well that's gonna work but anyway it's the flea card again so you can see i used the flannel gray here it's the same color it actually looks a bit brighter on this but i think that's just because it's in stark contrast with the other colors and so yeah this is like one of those things that you could make with Holst super soft it's so light like this thing weighs far less than 300 grams which is crazy for a cardigan and you can use it for this kind of design as well you know here i went for lace weight but you i was actually recommended fingering weight uh it's so flexible like anything from sport to lace weight this yarn can pretty much cover holding it single regardless and once you've covered sport weight you can start holding it double uh, for gk weight up to worsted weight and i've thinking about doing that because i like the veronica cardigan a lot of people have been going on and on about because i need something big to just grab and have over my shoulder sometimes if i'm wearing long sleeves i'm just gonna go out for a bit just something to just keep me a bit warm and not being like super insulating i i kind of need that so i have two other cones as well and i thought about maybe using one of those and hold the yarn double it will require a bit of yarn winding but i can do that so it's just very versatile like this is just like basic tools in my mind uh, i'm not mean like trying to be like my usual huh I'm rationalizing my purchases like this stuff here is stash this is stuff that i'm itching to use up this stuff it's like utilitarian kind of thing it's kind of part of i guess the skein day business if you will uh it's just like yeah I, I don't think i can explain it further than that but maybe the singles gains i feel a bit different about because they occupy a bit of space and that was per perhaps a bit more uh impulsive buy if you will so the first thing that was a bit nuts i agree was getting another three cakes of their bleached white so as you can see it's not the worst white you know as the bleached white goes it's pretty okay it doesn't glow in the dark you know uh but i know what you're thinking and it doesn't even like have two or three thousand meters of this yarn and yes i do i do maybe i should just have gotten a cone and be done with it at this point because i have enough yarn for that i'm sure but hey, that's, uh, yeah. I have plans for this though. This is actually something I have plans for and just thought it'd be nice to have a separate section with the same dye lot and everything. Although I don't know if you can call bleached white a dye lot as such because it's literally just been bleached, but it has a lot number. So I would just feel better about doing it this way because the other white yarn is actually designated for a garment. It might be my Edinburgh cardigan. I haven't actually announced anywhere that I'm going to Edinburgh because it's not something I've actually organised. But I assume that like it's a given. It's one of my local festivals. Uh, unless anything comes up, I am going. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We're still waiting for a response from the people that are deciding who gets the passes for the podcast lounge. So yeah, Edinburgh Art Festival. Of course, I haven't even thought about announcing it. It's just like, it's just a, it's just a train ride up. It'll be all right. I'll probably go. Hopefully, you know. And that was a digression again. Uh, I also got these four cakes of their... Is it graphite? Yeah. So it's a very, very dark grey, nearly black, which is kind of where I... I guess I prefer my blacks to be, because I, I like a natural black more so than a dyed black. They can be a bit too deep sometimes. So, yeah, pretty happy to have this. And this is actually the fifth one, so now there are three back there, and I have five. I ordered five, apparently. I did actually get a black one as well, so you can compare them. You sort of see my point between a dyed black and what might be a natural black or dyed 
to look like a natural black i don't really care that much but you know you see the difference it's still really dark but it doesn't have this sort of black hole look to it where there's like no depth whatsoever it's just kind of i mean i guess it's, it has all the depth it's sucking all the light uh so yeah i feel like this is kind of my equivalent of when Kristen of Wool and Vine and Laura from Jinx Yarn were like doing their Spindrift hauls and just getting a bunch of different skeins of a bunch of different colours and yeah that's kind of how I feel about this as well and I kind of have a separate stash for it as such where I have these kinds of yarns that it's just my pick that, choose that, do some mittens, do some other things and just kind of grab as I go. It's yeah my toolkit more so than my stash. It's still registered in my Ravelry stash and all that stuff, so it's not like I'm being completely in denial. It's just kind of how I look at different parts of my stash. I have a sock yarn section, I have a this kind of yarn section, and I have just this shelf. And it's mainly this shelf and the sock yarn that I feel like must be knitted. It's a sweater quantity, so I feel like must be knitted. This stuff is my toolkit. Some other colours I got is these because I remember seeing this colour in Wet Coast Wools in Vancouver which is a place overseas where they sell this yarn and I just love this colour. It's called Tundra and the green is impeccable. Uh, but then I saw this on my shade card because I have the whole super soft shade card which is what this yarn is and I was like but this green? Why don't I remember this green? This is Cossack. See? C-O-S-S-A-C-K and yeah I do actually prefer this I'm very glad I got this but I still really like this so now I have some green to grab because you can't really have enough green I kind of wish I got some lighter greens as well because it could be nice to just do something in only green tones oh well maybe there'll be another order no 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 <laughs> and this is probably the point where I was kind of spoiling myself a little bit and got three shades of some plum colors so this is actually their Noble yarn, which I'll be talking about a bit later. And I got their Super Soft in Aubergine, which is pretty Aubergine colours, if you ask me. I don't know if you can see it more in this light or that light. We have two lights today. Things I do for you guys. Uh, so then there is the Plum colour, and it couldn't really be more spot on. So, yeah. It kind of seems to change depending on where I hold it. But that gives you an idea of the range. I think this is the more accurate one, actually. So we can trust my ceiling lamp more so than the window this time. Well, and then I got a red one as well. This is Venetian. Venetian? 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 English. Can't do it. It's red. I love red. I love red as much as I love burgundy, in case you didn't know. And I got another noble cake. I can't really call these skins. It's a cake. I got cakes. I ordered cakes. Cakes from Denmark. So yeah, this is the Noble yarn, which is what I got with a shade card. And it's their Geelong, Geelong, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, cashmere blend. So it is soft. If For some reason you have issues with super soft, which I already think is super soft, you should try their Noble yarn. Yes, it is priced a bit higher. And it is even thinner, if you can believe it, but it should be substitutable, I think. And, guys. So yeah, uh, that is something I did. And this is the shade card with all the noble colors and they are fabulous. <sighs> so yeah, that was my little splurge for Black Friday. I didn't even have bad feelings about it. And part of me was thinking why I didn't get more because their yarn is really, really affordable. And we're talking like, they're probably two sweater quantities per, co per cone, at least. Like I know Benedette of the Wet Coast Wool podcast told me she was making her boyfriend a skate, like a, a sweater knitted up in double yarn from one of these cones, and she still had plenty left. There's a lot of yarn in those. Because the meterage of her super soft is already very generous. So yeah, uh, but still, I was like, actually I should've just gotten more, it's so, amazing uh i was actually thinking about also ordering from garnet sog because they are pretty equivalent to what holster doing and i would quite like to support both of them but in the end garnet sog had a bit too high shipping for me and where i live so in the end i didn't order but that's a shame because 
Gone with Sog actually do lower prices for their yarns, even when there's not a Black Friday sale, and they do way better yellows. I think whole strength is their purples, their greens, and their blues. They're really good at those colors. But Garnet Sog really have an edge when it comes to the yellows, the warmer colors for sure. So I would definitely recommend Garnet Sog as well. Uh, yeah, Danish company, very similar yarn if not the same. Definitely compatible and substitutable. Uh, so I just want to give a good word to both of them because I do like them both. But I do tend to gravitate towards Holst more because of the shipping rates. Uh, but it might depend where you live. So I would still consider Garnet Sog as well. Uh, anyway, I'm not like your shopping advisor and I'm kind of like feeling that I don't want to become you know the Zoella of knitting podcasts I feel like it's going that way more and more because I have had so many journeys where I'm doing yarn tours and basically going to yarn festivals and other cities with yarn shops and I'm like I bought this I bought that and it's like I guess the skills I want to show off on this podcast is not my ability to shop it's my ability to knit and design it's um so it's kind of becoming something i don't want it to be because i just buy yarn because i knit a lot i clearly i mean i don't knit it fast enough to knit up all the stuff but i i've talked about this before as well and completely failed at it because i went to so many journeys that ended up becoming a lot of yarn shopping but in the end, I don't want this to become, I bought this and I bought that podcast. I'm sorry, I'm going to mute my laptop. So it's just some, some thoughts I've been having. I, yeah, it's, uh, again, it's not a judgment for anyone who do like to do that and anyone who enjoys watching that. It's just, I think for me, that whole shopping consumerism thing isn't really me. Uh, but I do like yarn. Mm, so I have been, you know, shopping a lot. And I'm not going to put restraints on myself. I'm just going to try to have that as a... Uh, underlying goal in my mind I guess just consider what I want this podcast to be and I want this podcast to be sharing and yeah sharing about knitting it's about knitting and not about shopping it's about using resources more than just acquiring them yes I do collect yarn apparently and I use it it's never for display or storage you know the intent is to use them and I always buy them with a use in mind Albeit sometimes a bit vague. Uh, so yeah. Uh, where was I going with this again? So anyway, I think I am done though. So I hope to see you when I'm doing uh, Vlogmas. Why do I, I, I can't do Vlogmas if I can't remember how to say Vlogmas. But yeah, whatever the thing I'm going to do in December. I hope to see you there. I will try to do the best that I can. Obviously I might run out of content. It might not be interesting. But it's for people who just want to follow me in my day-to-day -day life. And listen to me talk about other things than knitting. But if you're not interested in that. Then that's totally fine. You will not be missing out on the content of this podcast. So it's cool if you just want to watch that instead. So that is all I have to say. And I will see you next week. And of course thank you all so much for all the loveliness as ever. Bye. Guys, I don't know if you can see this, but there are three parakeets in the tree outside my room. This is so cool. Like, I don't know how they got here, but I think just some have escaped like as pets ages ago and just managed to live out on their own. And so, yeah, little birds outside my home and now they went away. <laughs>